टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर फाइव ऑफ आर हिस्ट्री विच इज दी वैदिक एज लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव द सोर्सेज ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन डिविजन ऑफ द वैदिक पीरियड पीपल अदर देन द आर्यस हु वर द आर्यस फीचर्स ऑफ द वैदिक सिविलाइजेशन एंड इंटेंस स्टडी एट अ स्पेशल बेरियल एट इमाम गांव लेट्स वॉर्म अप दिस इज द पिक्चर डिपेक्टिंग एन इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ वैदिक पीरियड ए identify and name it b describe the system institution c which ashram did it belong to application skills women were given a certain amount of freedom in selecting their husbands monogamy was the usual practice women controlled household affairs and participated in the sacrifice sacrifices and the other domestic ceremonies and feast probably there was no seclusion of women and no restrictions on their movements the practice of widow remarriage was also noticed there have been no examples of child marriage and the marriageable age was around 16 17 years the education of girls was not neglected some of them composed hymns and rose to the ranks of seers such as vishwara ghosha and apala now answer the following question based on the above passage a what was the usual practice during the vedic period b was child marriage practiced in the vedic period or c were the girls got educated during the vedic period find out the answers of these questions by yourself With the arrival of Aryans during 1500 BCE to 600 BCE India took a step forward from pastoral nomadic life to a settled life this was made possible due to large scale surplus agricultural production along with the progress in economic life political and social life also advanced fact file the oldest veda is the rigveda the rigveda includes more than 1000 hymns in praise to various gods the vedas were written in old or vedic sanskrit which is different from the sanskrit you learn in school the sources of information the historians have divided the vedic age into two main categories the period of 1500 to 1000 bce termed as early vedic period and 1000 to 600 bce as the later vedic period why is this period called the vedic age it is because our main sources of information about these periods come from the four vedas they were the rigveda the samveda the yajurveda and the atharveda the four vedas give a lot of information about the aryans and their religion society and culture This is the image of an extract from Rigveda. Who were the Aryans? Most historians believe that the Aryans were a semi-nomadic pastoral but cultured race of people. They lived in Central Asia. One group later known as Indo-Aryans broke away from the main stock of Indo-Europeans in Central Asia and moved eastwards and reached the Indian subcontinent. This assumption is supported by the fact that certain words and terms are common both to the European languages and the Indo-Aryan language Sanskrit. For example, matri in Sanskrit and mother in English, bratri in Sanskrit and brother in English and bruder in German etc. That is why Sanskrit is considered to be a part of a Indo-European family of languages. This family includes Indian languages like Sanskrit, Hindi, Assamese, Gujarati, Kashmiri, Sindhi and European languages like English, French, German, Greek, Italian and Spanish. The languages like Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam belong to the Dravidian family of languages. Languages used in the Northeast India belong to the Tibeto-Burman family and The languages spoken in Jharkhand and some parts of central India belong to the Austroasiatic family of languages. Probably as the population of Indo-European increased, they were forced to move out from their original place in search of new shelters and pastures. It is also likely that these Aryans had fled their homeland due to some disease or droughts. Those who migrated to India came to be known as the Indo-Aryans.
divisions of the Vedic period. The Aryans entered India in stages. The early Aryans first settled around the river Indus and the river Saraswati that has now dried up. This stage of history that is the period between 1500 BCE and 1000 BCE is known as the early Vedic period. Since the sources of information of this period comes from the Rig Veda, this period is also known as the Rig Vedic period. These are the images of manuscript of Rig Veda. Gradually, the Aryans moved ahead and settled in the Ganga Valley. They renamed the entire region under their control as Aryavarta, which means the land of the Aryans. This period between 1000 BCE and 600 BCE is known as Later Vedic period. The main sources of information of this period are the Yajur Ved, the Sam Ved, and the Atharva Ved. Features of the Vedic civilization The religion of the Aryans. The religion of the Rig Vedic Aryans was very simple. The people worshipped the various forces of nature. Thus, they had many gods and goddesses. Surya was the sun god, Indra was the god of thunder. Rain and water, he was one of the most popular gods as he caused the rain to fall, giving them prosperity. Vayu was the god of wind, Prithvi was the goddess of the earth, Agni represented sacrificial fire. The Aryans pleased their gods by performing yajnas and sacrifices. Their offering to the gods included ghee, milk, grains and som juice. The priest in course of time became very powerful. In the later Vedic age, some new gods gained greater importance. They were Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. The most popular deities during the epic period were Rama and Krishna. The Upanishad lay stress on the principles of karma, action and moksha, salvation. Political organization, the king and his officers. The successful among the Aryan chiefs emerged as kings or rajans. The king exercised vast powers. The kingship became hereditary in the later Vedic age. That is, the title passed on from father to his eldest son. The king ruled with the help of a number of officials such as the Senani, commander of the army and the Purohita, chief priest. The Gramini, the village headman, also assisted him. The Gramini administered the village. He also kept a fighting band ready to help the king. There were two important assemblies known as Samiti and the Sabha. The Sabha was formed by the chiefs of the villages and towns. The Samiti was a smaller body. It consisted of a few prominent persons, men of wealth and learning. In the later Vedic period, the small tribal kingdoms were replaced by large kingdoms and the number of officers also increased. Society, the Rig Veda mentions social classes on the basis of the types of work they did. The group of people who performed rituals were called Brahmins or priests. The term Rajas referred to the people who protected the people from the invaders. The terms Vish and Jana were used to refer to common people. The term Vaishya is derived from Vish. The community as a whole were also termed as Jana, for example, Purujana or Vish, Yadujana or Vish, etc. The early Vedic society did not have class or caste distinction based on birth. In this chart, you can see the Varna system. Think smarter. The Vedas are the earliest literature in the world, yet we got access to them rather late. Aheim from the Rig Veda says, I am a poet, my father is a physician and my mother is a grinder. Earning livelihood through different means, we lived together. What does this Haim tells us about the Rig Vedic class system? The group of people who opposed Aryans were described as Dasas or Dasyus. These people spoke different languages and did not perform sacrifices. Later the term Dasa came to refer to slave or women and men captured in war. They were the property of their owners. Gradually, these distinctions became rigid. By the later Vedic period, the society was clearly divided into four distinct classes based on birth. The last position was occupied by the Shudras. Occupation 
Cattle rearing and agriculture were the main occupations of the Aryans. Other common occupations were chariot making, pottery making, weaving, jewelry making, metal working, carpentry, tanning and fishing. Priesthood was a very prestigious occupation. The priest performed several functions besides conducting religious ceremonies. They also acted as village teachers and doctors. Vedas were taught by them. They also knew about medicinal herbs and plants. So whenever someone fell ill, the priest gave medicines to the sick person. A new metal called iron was discovered during this time. Since it is a hard metal, it was better suited than copper or bronze for making agricultural tools and weapons of war. As a result of the discovery of iron, metal working became an important profession. Metal workers were held in respect by the entire society. Daily life The Aryans ate simple but nourishing food. Wheat, maize and barley were their staple diet. They also took milk and milk products such as butter, ghee, curd and cheese. They also consumed wild honey, fruits, vegetables and meat. They even served special food to special guests on special occasions. Among drinks, they took som juice and sura juice which were intoxicating strong drinks. The former drink was even offered to gods in religious ceremonies. They wore two pieces either cotton or woolen clothes. One was wrapped around the waist and the upper garment around the shoulders. Both men and women also wore jewelry such as bangles, earrings, etc. In the loop, some interesting facts about Vedas. Vedas were the first ones to acknowledge the existence of the solar system. Mahabharata mentions the concept of cloning test tube babies and surrogate mothers. Vedas figured out gravity before the West did. Games and amusements. Aryans also found time for games and amusements, hunting, horse racing, chariot racing, wrestling, dancing, music and dice gambling were their favorite recreations. People other than Aryans. While the Aryans were occupying the northwest and later the northern regions of the subcontinent, there were other groups of people who were living in other regions. Most of the information that we have about these groups or settlements come from evidence gathered from their burial places. Case study, a special burial at Inamgaon. Inamgaon is a place which is now a part of Maharashtra. Many centuries ago, between 1600 BC and 700 BC, Inamgaon was home to a Chalcolithic settlement. The settlement is divided into three phases. Phase 1, Malwa culture 1600 to 1400 BCE, early Jorve culture 1400 to 1000 BCE, phase 3, late Jorve culture 1000 to 700 BCE. The people of this settlement often buried their dead in a pit in the floor of their houses. They would also bury other objects along with the dead person. These included vessels containing food and water. The dead person would be buried with his head facing the north direction. Sometimes the legs of the dead person would be cut off before burial. In case of dead children, the bodies were first cremated and the ashes would be put into a container known as an urn. The urn was then buried under the ground. In a large five-room house in Inamgao, a skeleton of a man was found in a very big clay jar which was buried in the central courtyard. The skeleton was found in an interesting position. The knees were bent and drawn up close to the chest. The chin too was bent close to the chest. He looked like he was in a seated position. Inamgao lies close to the river Ghod, which is a tributary of river Bhima. From evidence found at Inamgao burial sites, we know that we know that people who lived here practiced agriculture and animal rearing. Barley and millet were the main crops grown. The huts were square shaped or round and surrounded by mud walls. Megalith burials. The word megalith comes from two words, mega meaning large and lithos mean, which means stone. This is the image of 
megalith burial some of the earliest megalithic burials are from the period around 1000 bce a megalithic burial is characterized by two things one is that the dead person is not buried inside the house but some distance away from it the other is that the burial phase is marked by a large stone in some cases the burial place is marked by a circle of many large stones this is the image of a megalithic burial site at brahmagiri in karnataka the cist can be seen at the center a cist is a box like structure made of stone which lies inside a pit the dead body is placed inside the cyst in some cases burial pits or cyst have been found with more than one skeleton this indicates that sometimes members of the same family were buried together these family burial pits or cyst had an opening called the pothole whenever another member of the family died his body was put into the family's burial pit through this pothole Megalithic burial sites have been found at Hallur and Brahmagiri in Karnataka as well as other places in South India. They have also been found in the northeast and Kashmir. Some of these burial sites show that certain people were buried with a number of objects that were valuable. For example, in Brahmagiri a skeleton was found buried with many gold beads as well as some stone beads and copper bangles. This was very different from some other skeletons which were buried with just some pots this shows that the way a person was buried may have depended on how wealthy or important he was in society rich people or leaders were buried with some expensive with buried with more expensive items than poor or common people burials at vidarbha excavation at some sites in vidarbha in maharashtra have shown that dead people were buried along with black and red pottery copper and iron items ornaments of gold and even horses the same items were found in some of the other burial sites discussed earlier value and life skills bhagavad gita's core message arjuna is you every human being two fighting camps are two tendencies qualities characters motivations desires actions in every human being fighting together named the pro spiritual and anti spiritual battlefield is the inner world of every human being seeking the practical spiritual realization krishna is the explainer of the practical spirituality aspect the bhagavad gita is one of the core spiritual text on earth India can be proud of however it is to be understood in the context of practical spirituality recapitulation the aryans lived in central asia vedas are the main sources of information about the vedic period sabha and samiti were two popular and significant bodies of the aryans society society was divided into groups on the basis of occupation the king ruled with the help of a number of officials such as senani and purohit inam gaon was situated close to river ghod a tributary of the bhima river thank you class let's meet up in the next class